This review is of Troll Blood by Catherine Langrish. This is the third book in the series, Troll and Fell, Troll and Troll Mill. And um, this one takes a little bit of a different turn because in the previous books, people that are, um, some of the characters in the book um, actually, or in the series, actually travel to the North American continent, kind of like um, Eric the Red, um, and so the author decided with this book to take advantage of the Viking journey to America, or journeys actually, and use that as a way to bridge Nor uh, Scandinavia with North America, introduce uh, one particular uh, representation of Native Americans or Native Canadians, it probably would actually be more accurate, um, from that time period as best as they, as he, she was able to. Unfortunately, the tribe that was in that area was, um, well, they're extinct. Um, and this also gave a chance to introduce some of the creatures out of folklore from the, the tribes of that area. And so it's very interesting. Um, they, one of the things I found challenging about this particular book is the author chose to include words from the language of that, um, the, the tribe that she chose to be representative. And so there is a glossary at the back that shows how to pronounce the words. And like Janu, which is an ice giant that was once a human being, but they were so... Um, well, certain circumstances drive them to become these horrible, horrible creatures that are always hungry and always chasing after food in the wintertime. And so in this book, again, they move from Scandinavia. And you can see here's the United Kingdom. So here's Scandinavia over here. Uh, Norway, I believe this is. Um, and so they travel from here to here. And this is somewhere in... Uh, I, don't, I haven't bothered to look on the map where exactly this would be. But they've traveled to here. And this story is very interesting, in, uh, but also more mature than the other two books. So if your child has been enjoying this series, there is violence in this series, uh, in this book, I mean. Um, some of it is going to be disturbing for younger readers. So I would say that this is suitable for older children and up into the, maybe even the upper teens not for really young kids, um, but you know, you, you, you might want to pre-read it just to see what I'm talking about because there's, um, there is murder, um, and, um, such, I mean, it's not really, really graphically described, but you do read about murder and yeah. Um, it's not, it's, it's not, uh, as restrained as, the previous two books. So the, it, it is very interesting because like I said, you get to see some of the creatures that are, that are from the mythology of this area. There are some creatures that live on the beach and are constantly turning the stones or over to show images. And there's another group of creatures that will capture you and they'll stake you down and wait for you to rot. And then they'll eat you. And then there's the Janu and there is, there's a bunch of them. And they don't even cover all of the ones that they mention in this uh, book in, in detail. Uh, they just Some of them are just mentioned in conversations. But uh, those three at least are um, important to the story. And uh, very interesting uh, because it is, again creatures that I'm not familiar with. And f from from here uh, in Scandinavia, the only thing that is carried over to here is the Nis. Uh, Nithing is its name. 
but otherwise there's nothing from there other than the, the people. And unfortunately, one of the people is a rather psychopathic person. Um, what they would have called a ber berserker back in those days. And so the, the main characters, uh, Peer and Hilda, find themselves in a real pickle because they have been, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it for you, but let's just say it becomes quite challenging for them, um, especially for Peer. And uh, again, as with the previous two books, this book does teach about being uh, brave in the face of very dangerous situations um, uh, and also the folly of standing up at, for yourself at the wrong time against somebody who really has no qualms in, in hurting you or killing you. In addition, um, it d does have some other morals, uh, especially at the very end of the book, which I thought was very good because, you know, honestly, um, the relative, the small amount of morals that are in these two books um, cause it really mostly focuses, it really mostly focuses on bravery and, um, loyalty, um, helping even when it's ex beyond inconvenient for you to do so, uh, because, but doing it simply because it's the right thing, which I think is fantastic. There's no doubt about that, that, you know, sometimes we, um, have the opportunity to do opportunity to make a difference in somebody else's life but it's going to be very uncomfortable for us and maybe even dangerous but it's important to do these things and speaking from personal experience it is definitely rewarding even if you know somebody's not going to reward you personally um although i have had that as, as, as well but um i think that that's a, a really good way to look at life but of course, at the same time, you do have to be careful of the people who will take advantage of you, on the other hand. Um, but again, at the very end of the book, it teaches some important mess uh, lessons. And I like that they went into that aspect of life as well. So um, for me personally, uh, this was a more mature book, so a little bit more enjoyable for me. Um, so I'll give this one a seven and a half. And again, uh, I, I also enjoyed it because I got to see uh, a viewpoint that was different than American viewpoint. Also, it showed it, I got to learn a little bit about history, although it was couched in a lot of fiction um, and about mythological creatures of North America. Um, and it's it just, it's kind of, a refreshing change from the typical range of monsters and and such that you are have become the dominant creatures of books and movies these days um and unlike some of the mythological creatures of and, and supernatural creatures of indonesia which some of them are well, their portrayal, I should say, in movies is pretty laughable. Um, but the way Catherine Langrish used these creatures in this story was definitely interesting. Thanks for watching and hope you have a great day.